This is really a unique time in history. For the first time we see a chance that the world population is going to stop growing. Um, demographers differ on it, but the idea is that somewhere around the middle of this century, somewhere around about 9 billion people, the population will peak and then start to mildly decline or plateau. Now that does a, that's both a sort of an opportunity and also a risk, because the opportunity is of course that you have a chance to operate on a sustainable management of the earth, because you're not got the inexorable increase in population. At the same time, um, we have got <coughs> unprecedented changes in some of the things that really matter. One of the ones is, for example, the ageing of the population. Science has managed to make medicine work so that people are living vastly longer, and albeit varies across the world, what you're looking at is a significantly ageing population. This is the most sort of scientifically literate world that we've ever encountered. So arguably, we could be moving towards some sort of halcyon days um, of you know science and technology solving a, a finite world population and making us all work. But um, that's arguably a bit utopian. John, we look forward to your words of wisdom. The the point I'm going to then make is really how the system is failing. It's failing because we have a billion people in poverty um, go to bed hungry. We have another billion people who go to bed essentially with inadequate diets, so malnutrition. Um, we have one and a half billion people who are, have no access to electricity. And we have an, uh, an something of the order of uh, a billion people who actually don't have access to decent fresh water. That's an enormous failure. And in addition to that failure, where there's big erosions of the capability of the Earth. The, ex the loss of biodiversity is a disgrace. The loss of ecosystem services is both a disgrace and a worry. The next sort of section of the talk is really going to be focusing on weathering that storm. The ways we can actually use science and technology to have innovative ideas about addressing these, these issues of water, food and energy security and indeed climate change. Thank you for your We live in a dangerous world. Um, things happen um, and we need to be thinking about how we deal with those things, whether we can predict them better and can we actually somehow assess these dangers and use science and technology to help us both predict them and address them. I think the, the, the big worry at the moment is that is obviously climate change sits there in the background as an issue and to an extent um, we have no control over climate change for the next two decades. What's up there because of the natural time delays in the system is going to determine the climate um, for the next 20 years. The areas where we have a chance and we have got to address it urgently is the issues of food security, um, energy security and water security. All of these are going to come, f come on a much faster time scale so you know the world population is increasing consumption consumption is increasing so we need to be producing more food more available fresh water and more energy and clean energy um, over the next two decades and that, that challenge is enormous and if we don't meet that challenge we're going to see significant social disruption it's hard to imagine anything, any of these issues being addressed without science. And I think that the important thing here is that we've got to use science in a creative and sensible way. Just for example, let's just take agriculture. Agriculture has the potential to feed people, but it also is a major em emitter of greenhouse gases. Um, can we have a climate smart agriculture that will be developed with the help of science and technology and extension services and relatively low tech as well as high tech interventions, which could mean that agriculture could actually contribute to the mitigation of climate change rather than being a cause of it.